This is your printer on the top. I'm forward and back. And I'm going to give you a warning. This is forward? Yeah, forward and back. And I'm going to give you a warning with okay. five minutes left. Turn it? Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Frampton from the Boeing Company, Huntington Beach, California. Uh, we've developed a mission concept that could be uh, considered for a discovery mission uh, category that could address uh, answering some of the strategic knowledge gaps that were put forth by the um, small business, the uh, SBAG, the small, bad, small Bodies Analysis Group. Uh, the strategic knowledge gaps, or SKGs, represent uh, gaps in the knowledge or information required to reduce risk, to increase effectiveness, <clears throat> and improve the design of robotic and human space exploration missions. These SKGs could be used by NASA to help inform robotic um, research and uh, investment strategies and to prioritize technology development projects for human and robotic exploration. There's actually three sets of strategic knowledge gaps <coughs> put forth by each of the, uh, these three ag uh, organizations. The Lunar um, Exploration Analysis Group, or LEAG, has one set, which were referred to earlier by Barbara Cohen, uh, the Mars Exploration, or MAPAG, has another set of SKGs uh, that were referred to in the talk by um, Andy Rifkin. I'm going to address the SKGs that were <coughs> developed by the um, SBAG. Um, and that was a team led by Andy Rifkin and, and Mark Sykes, actually. Um, and I, I understand that they're to be updated soon. So um, referring to the SBAG uh, SKGs, uh, these were drawn uh, from a study in 2012 um, for the NEOs and Phobos and Deimos. The SBAG study was motivated by NASA's uh, Global Exploration Roadmap, which focuses on the asteroid first scenario. Uh, and they're divided into four categories listed here. The first, human mission target identification and for NEOs and Phobos and Deimos. Second, understanding how to work on the surface and interact with the surface of small bodies. Third, understanding the small body environments and the potential risks uh, for crew operations and also for robotic operations. And then fourth, understanding the small body resource potential for ISRU. So I'm going to address a mission concept that could address many of these SBAG SKGs. And then I'll go through the ones that it can address and the list of those that could not be addressed by this mission. So what we had in mind was a carrier spacecraft that could go to one of the small bodies, an NEO, and orbit it and um, drop off a series of three or four landing pods. Uh, these would be released uh, by springs from the orbiter that might be 10 or 15 kilometers above the uh, asteroid. Um, and by uh, basically neutralizing the um, orbital velocity of these pods, they would just float to the surface. And we've done calculations of how long they might take, maybe several hours. Um, and would hit the surface with about the same acceleration as your laptop falling off of your lap. So they could easily be ruggedized to survive that. Um, 
the pods we had in mind, three or four of them, could be about 20 kilograms in mass. Um, here's a um, uh, drawing of the concept. Um, these would have several uh, science instruments in them, uh, including seismometers, uh, cameras, or basically micro lens cameras, and could have a small Lang Langmuir probe. Um, they would also carry an explosive, a PETN, um, about 12 kilograms. So the idea is that uh, one of these could be detonated and create a crater. That detonation would actually send seismic waves through the small asteroid so that you could um, get this, the uh, seismic data with the other three, or, uh, two or three um, with their accelerometers. But before they have that detonation, you could use the micro lenses, which are shown here in these uh, little blue dots, uh, three on each side, to um, really characterize the regolith uh, very carefully. Um, we also have um, band antennas that could uh, transmit the data back to the carrier spacecraft. Um, so the main goal here is to get the seismic um, data from having um, these uh, detonate in succession. So if you had four, then you could have three detonations. And the first one um, would not uh, need to have the accelerometers because it couldn't it would blow up. It wouldn't measure anything. The fourth one wouldn't need to have the... Um, the explosive material. Um, the cameras uh, would take uh, data actually during, uh, could be taking data during the explosion. The, uh, so there would be several instruments also on the carrier, in particular the imaging cameras which could record the uh, detonation sequences and measure the crater afterwards. An IR imaging spectrometer, which could measure, uh, take the spectra of mineralogy of the uh, fresh material after you've removed the uh, weathered material. Uh, S-band trans transponder, um, and then uh, acting as a relay. On the pods, you could have the three uh, micro lens cameras the Langmuir probe for measuring the electric field and the electron density and study d dust levitation uh, and the explosives and then the accelerometers. Um, so I was going to go quickly through the listing of SKGs that could be addressed by such a mission concept. In category one, for human mission target identification for the small bodies, the important things are to uh, know the uh, size and the albedo and the rotation state of the asteroid. These could be determined by um, the cameras that are on the, um, the um, carrier. And since you want uh, albedo in both visible and IR, the IR spectrometer imaging would also have a role there. In category two, understanding how to work on or interact with the small body surface. Um, one of the issues is um, uh, dust and uh, the mechanical and electrical effects of the small body surface particles. Uh, so in the first column, uh, we list the SKG. In the second column is the definition or the description of the SKG in the small bodies um, in the SBAG document. And in the right column is how they would be addressed by instruments on this uh, mission. Um, so for example, for uh, measuring porosity of the small body interior, 
um, in the cratering experiment, giving the seismic data to address that. Uh, for the geotechnical properties, which is really kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different uh, uh, parameters, uh, different um, various of the uh, instruments could address those. Um, anchoring of the tethered, anchoring for tethered activities, um, we want to understand the um, the properties of the regolith so that the micro lens could give that. Um, now just there's a lot of these that would be addressed so I'll go through them uh, sort of quickly and if anyone wants a full copy of this see me and I can I can uh, send it to you. Um, so for expected uh, dust environment uh, due to the ejecta from micrometeorites or from the uh, explosive events. Um, the um, orbital imaging is the primary thing there. For, uh, for Phobos and Deimos, in particular, one of the uh, goals is to um, measure the dust torus. Uh, you could get that uh, from uh, backscatter observations from the camera, or if you had a possible dust impact uh, acoustic detector, that could work too. Um, for dust levitation, the um, uh, Langmuir probe could be could be used there. Um, and then into category three, understanding the uh, small body environment and its effects on uh, human life or effects on the crew. Uh, the effects from solar flare activity, the Langmuir probe is used there to uh, get the uh, surface electric field and ionization um, properties from uh, solar activity, possible solar flares. Uh, as um, for the small body surface as a source of radiation, the Langmuir probe um, could also be used in that experiment. Um, and then in category four, understanding the small body resource potential. Um, for identifying uh, resource rich uh, small bodies. Uh, the, this could be primarily water. Uh, the RAR spectrometer um, observing the crater that would be created, the fresh material, is really the best uh, way of getting that. And then for Phobos and Deimos, um, the description in the SPAG suggests drilling. Uh, we wouldn't be able to drill with these pods, but uh, the IR spectrometer really could, we think, address that. So in terms of the SPAG uh, SKGs that are not able to be addressed here, um, some of them could be addressed by a subsequent mission that could be larger, maybe carry a drill or carry a uh, ground penetrating radar Others uh, that also could not be addressed by this mission might be addressed by laboratory experiments. Um, so anyway, you can see that probably about 50% of the goals of the SKGs could be addressed by this mission concept. Thank you. We do have time for questions. Any questions, Brian? I actually have a question. With your pods um, releasing and having them float down to the asteroid, is there a minimum asteroid size to make sure that they don't go flying um, past or bounce off? I think there is. I think we were the one we were looking at was about half a kilometer okay. in diameter. And also, I should point out that these are pancake-sized in shape, and they're symmetric, so it doesn't 
they, they don't care which side ends up. Uh, so that's why the cameras are on the uh, perimeter. Very good. Anyone else? Yeah, Derek? Uh, Derek Sears, NASA Ames. Um, are you going to need to know the relative positions of these um, pods? And how, how, if so, how are you going to do that? Of the pods? Yeah. I think that um, you can't control very well where they land, but you can certainly observe them with the uh, cameras, and you would know where they are. So they're big enough and the orbiter is low enough that you can actually yeah. see them. So uh, Paul Abel, NASA Johnson Space Center. So uh, interesting concept. I was wondering, have you looked at trying to make your pods a little less massive? Um, each pod is 20 kilograms. Could you uh, maybe get away with uh, a lighter pod? Probably. What's, what's we didn't, driving you to We didn't really kilograms? do a trade study on it. Yeah. But uh, you know, over half of the mass is the explosive material, the PETN. Right. So it depends on how large of a crater you want. Right. I, I, I think it would be good to look at that and just see how what, what size you need uh, to, to get those uh, strategic knowledge gaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Good session. Thanks to my co-chair, Chris. And uh, go get... Uh,